Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. Where Karens assume that everybody's put on Earth to serve them and nobody's safe. And in today's episode, guys, Karens are getting arrested, getting their careers ruined, and one woman gets a surprise of a lifetime. Guys, I hope you enjoy the stories in this one. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, your crazy stories can be sent to this email right here. I live in a fairly big city, so it's kind of unfortunate that I keep bumping into this woman, who I'll have to say that I'm not too fond of. I work in a gift shop, think candles, tarot cards, and fancy overpriced bars of soap, in an older affluent neighborhood of my city. So the rich snobby Karen of the story comes into the gift shop quite regularly, and she always has a million questions, and she's that kind of customer that no matter how busy you are, demands all the attention beyond her. Now our shop is fairly small, so literally everywhere you turn, here's this woman. It's fine, whatever, the woman's kind of rude, but she is manageable. And she always spends a decent amount of money, so it's okay. Now it's also important to note that the woman has a small dog, and we'll call this dog Pickles. Pickles is the cutest dog ever. The second Karen enters the store, every single time, she drops Pickles' leash and goes about her business, leaving Pickles to do whatever Pickles' little heart desires. Sometimes, it's come sit next to me and get pets, and sometimes it's not. Again, it's not a big store, so it really doesn't matter, as Pickles can't really get into too much trouble. And I do like the dog. So flash forward to our I don't work here story. One day, I'm shopping at a well-known clothing store. The kind of store with levels and elevators. It's a real unit of a clothing store, and it's also clear across the city. So while I'm looking at some sweaters, I feel a cold nose press up against my leg, and when I look down, guess who I see? You betcha. It was Pickles. Pickles' tail was wagging, leash trailing behind him, and the customer was nowhere to be seen. Now at this point I think to myself, I know this dog, and I don't really want to bump into Karen, as I'm certain she'll recognize me as we've interacted multiple times at this point. But Pickles is old and this was a big store, so I scoop the dog up and set off to find the woman. After too much searching, it turns out that Karen was on a completely different level than we were. Meaning either A, the old Springer Spaniel somehow went up two escalators by herself, or B, this woman straight up doesn't give a hoot and she left her dog on a random floor of a clothing store. Who does that? I approach the woman and I try to say a friendly hello to Karen when I saw her. Something along the lines of, hey, I was shopping and I recognized your dog. And before I could even remind her where she knew me from, and that it's not weird that I brought her her dog, the Karen hits me with, Hey, do you have this shirt in another size? I really hate this color. Go get me a different one, will you? Now I was so taken aback by what I can only describe as the audacity of this woman, that I could only muster a polite, Uh, actually, I don't work here, I work at the other store. To which the woman responds, Well, go ask someone for a different size for me, it's not that hard. I was more than happy to say, no, and I'm glad it ended there. Oh, the audacity of that woman, right? On a separate note, is anybody else mad at the fact that the woman doesn't unleash her dog before letting it roam? Like, if you're gonna do that lady, at least take the leash off. I was cringing so hard at the thought of the dog going up and down the escalators while attached to a freaking leash. And guys, I've seen those videos with grown adults and their shoelaces or jeans getting caught. I don't even want to think of what could have happened to poor Pickles. Okay, so this just happened last week, and honestly, it felt like a car accident. You know how during an accident, everything slows down, and it feels like you're starring in your own live-action film? Well, this was just like that. For some background, it's deep winter in my town right now. Streets are covered in snow, and it's fairly miserable. About three days after our latest snowstorm, and two missed trash pickups due to the horrible weather, a truck finally shows up, and the guys start clearing the mini mountains of garbage on our sidewalks. I look out the window and think, thank goodness, it was getting downright bubonic out there. So on this morning, I'm heading out to warm up my car and to hit the road, and before I can even get outside, I hear honking. Now not the beep beep excuse me type, but the lean on your horn, pissed off kind. I get outside, and it becomes pretty clear what the hubbub's about. The garbage truck is taking up a good lane and a half, as they do. And in the other lane, two cars are squared off bumper to bumper against each other, with a line of cars behind each. The cars behind are honking like mad bats. 
Inside the car squaring off, I can see one guy with his arms crossed staring at the opposing lady, who's screaming at him, and she's gesturing with her hands. The garbage truck has seemingly been abandoned, it's just sitting there like a beach diesel blue whale. The line behind the cars facing off are beginning to stretch down the road in both directions. So since my car is a glorified piece of crap, I know it'll take 15 minutes to warm up. So I start it up and stand back to enjoy a smoke and the morning's entertainment. While I'm at it, I take my garbage pail and dump it into the back of the sanitation truck. I think you guys can see where this is going. When the crazy old bat squaring off with the other guy sees me doing this, she starts yelling and pointing at me. I can't hear a word she's saying, so I head back to my sidewalk and light another. I ain't going nowhere, so I might as well light up. And that's when the crazy old bat flies out of her car and she rounds the back of the garbage truck. The woman comes charging at me. She's about 3 feet from me when we have the following exchange. She's obviously a crazy old bat and she screams, Hey, move your effing truck. To which I say, uh, I'm sorry. She says, I said, move your effing truck. I'm so sick of you garbage idiots hogging the road. I'm late to work and you're blocking the entire block. I say to her, I'm sorry miss, but that's not my truck. I'm just waiting... And that's when the woman interrupts me and says, I just saw you tossing garbage just now, you lying piece of crap. Now move your effing truck. Now at this point I start smiling because the situation was just so unreal to me. And that's when she screams, F you, you effing piece of crap. Don't you dare smirk at me. I tell her, miss, that's my house behind me. I'm just warming up my car, so please get back in your car. Now hearing this, the woman's triggered. She actually takes a swing at me. The woman misses me, but she gets a part of my cigarette as I move my hand to block. She's wearing woolen mittens, and the cherry gets stuck on, singeing it slightly. She then proceeds to fly into a rage, but I move out of the way as she lunges at me. She misses me again, and she nearly falls into a snowbank. Up the street, I can hear a siren, and at that point I'm thinking, thank goodness someone called the cops. I can see, however, that it's not the cops. It's an ambulance and a fire truck. They can't get past the line of cars, so pretty soon, a small army of EMS guys are rushing up my street. They run past me and the crazy woman across the street. And 10 minutes later, they're stretchering out the garbage guy. It turns out he had a stroke, as he and his co-worker were clearing out the dumpster in the commercial lot across my house. The guy just collapsed, and his buddy was by his side on the phone with EMS. The cops then show up and traffic started to move again. The crazy Karen starts yelling at the cops how I assaulted her and I was actually pretty close to being taken into custody. The cops were about to arrest me, until about 10 people walked up to the cops, and one had it on video of how it really went down. The crazy woman was put into handcuffs, and her car was towed. It was all pretty sweet, but it was a bit too much for me. I think it took me three days to process the whole thing. Man, thank goodness OP had witnesses, right? Like, it's just so terrifying to think that he was almost arrested, because a psycho woman loses her temper, attacked him, and then lied to police about it. Like, I'd suggest anger management and some jail time to teach her. So let's start this off by explaining what I do for work. First of all, I work for a school district doing IT. Given the nature of how the job works, I can be doing anything from running wires to cutting metals to all sorts of different types of work. When I'm doing things that would be a bit more dirty, I'll wear normal clothes. This isn't too different from what I'd normally wear, minus a t-shirt instead of a golf type shirt. So I'm at a Home Depot wearing a pan of tan cargo pants, hiking shoes, and a red t-shirt that says Coca-Cola on the front. As well as my old beat up hat and a pair of sunglasses on my hat cause I was inside. I'm looking around for some things to do a job in the afternoon, and that's when an old lady asked me for help. I gladly help her get something off a higher shelf, as well as answered a few questions for her because I knew more about construction than she did, obviously. The woman wanted to know the best ways to mount pictures that were a bit more heavy, so I directed her to some proper mounting materials, and then explained the best way to mount the hangers. Nothing special. So when I finish, of course, another lady marches in my direction, shouting that she needs help. Now keep in mind, I no way look like I work at Home Depot. I can hear the woman say, It's about damn time I found someone. I need help. Now at that I ignore her, since it clearly doesn't sound like she's talking to me. I have my back turned, and I'm looking at something on the shelves. And that's when the woman grabs my shoulder and pulls me back, and I scream, Hey, what the F, lady? She then says to me, That's no way to talk to a customer. I should report you to your manager for ignoring me and swearing at me. 
To which I say, that would be great if I worked here. Go away. The woman of course ignores what I'm saying and she tells me to go get a ladder. I tell her, no thanks, I'm good. The woman then tells me that she's gonna go get my manager. It's at that point I had enough. I say loud enough for all those around to hear, no, I will not go to your car to make out with you lady. You weirdo. Hearing that, the woman's taken aback. She stammers and says, I, I didn't, that, that's not... At this point, the manager sees the commotion and walks up, and the woman starts screaming at how unprofessional I am and so forth. Now, I know the manager. He knows I don't work here. The woman says to the manager, Hey, he helped this old bitch, and now he won't help me. I just... That's when the manager cuts her off and says, Ma'am, you can't harass customers. We have a zero tolerance for harassment of any kind, and we'll have to ask you to leave the store. Please leave now or you'll be escorted by force by an officer. Of course, the Karen refuses to leave, and as promised, she's booted from the store by the cops. So fast forward to yesterday, hence this post. Again, I work in the school district. All substitute teachers must come to me to get a temporary key fob to get in and out of the building. On this day, she walks into my office. As soon as she sees me, she immediately goes off screaming at me. Now I don't recognize her at first, then it hits me. It's at that point I put on a nice big grin and I act all nicely to her. I let her know that I have to call the office to confirm her placement. The office hears her screaming over the phone and I quietly and quickly explain. Two minutes later, the resource officer pulls up, sees what's going on and escorts her off the property. The woman's been removed from the list that subs are pulled from so she can no longer sub in our school district. After going into more detail of the situation with my boss and superintendent, he also plans on calling a few other districts to warn them of her behavior. So I might have ruined her career for now. I'm sure it's for the best. She couldn't be all that mentally stable. Yeah guys, I'm glad she's no longer teaching in that district. Like if she couldn't hold her temper in in a professional environment after seeing OP, it it's best that she's not around students. And I absolutely love the, ma'am, I won't go to your car and make out with you comment, guys. Make a mental note of that. It might be useful against a crazy person who's screaming at you. So a weird thing happened the other day that I'm still amazed at. I'm a vigil volunteer at the local hospice center. For those that don't know, a hospice center is where the elderly people with medical issues go to live out their final days. Sort of like a nursing home, but it's much more medically oriented and a vigil volunteer is a volunteer that gets called in to comfort the elderly, and also their families, when the doctors can tell that the patient's on their final few days of life. Basically, there's a group of us who take turns in shifts, so the patient isn't alone during this time, or to help the family with questions they have, or just to comfort them as well. They don't make for great places to volunteer, but it's extremely rewarding for those that don't mind, or are at least more comfortable around death. So on this particular day, I had just gotten off a 13-hour work shift and got the call to see if I could volunteer. And I won't lie, at first I said no. The coordinator told me that the man was a Vietnam veteran, and being a veteran myself, I decided to suck it up and go in anyway. So I go in, relieve the woman who's been watching him, and we start talking. We share about our time in service and start to share war stories and other life experiences, just basically sharing our lives with each other, which is honestly about 90% of the job. After a few hours, I guess it was probably 7 or 8 o'clock at this time, family's being extremely loud in the hallway, to the point that he can't hear me speak, so I close the door. Now I guess the lady of the family sees the door close, and she comes over and throws the door open so hard that it slams against the wall. We both stare at her, and before I can say anything, she starts yelling at me and says, Excuse me, I can't find my family member, so you need to get up and help me right now. Now I spoke to her calmly at first because it's somewhat reasonable to think that she thought I worked here. I tell her, ma'am, I can't help you find anyone, you'd need to find a nurse for that. I also need you to keep your voice down as this is a medical facility and you're probably disturbing other patients. She then screams and says, I don't care if I'm disturbing anyone, I need to find my family member and you and the rest of your staff are useless. I say to her, ma'am, I understand you're frustrated, but unless they move your family member, just go to their last room. I'm sure they're still there, since patients haven't been able to move rooms or even been able to get out of the rooms at the time because of the pandemic. The woman screams at me and says, don't you think I've tried that? They are not where they were last year. And that's when the Vietnam veteran speaks up and says, you haven't visited them in a year? Well, hell, they probably took you off the visitors list. I sure as hell would if I was them, I'd take your ass off my will too. 
And if you haven't noticed, we're trying to have a conversation, so I need you to get your loud ass out of my room. Unknown to me or the woman at this point, he hits the button for the light above the door, signaling that a nurse needs to help at this point. At this point, the woman loses it. She says, Just because you're old doesn't mean you can talk to me like that. I don't give a damn if you're dying. You have no right to talk to me this way. That's when the Vietnam veteran cuts her off and says, Well, that's good, because I'll probably be dead by this time tomorrow. It was at this point the charge nurse walks up and she heard us say all this and she was understandably mad at me for allowing this to happen. And she immediately spins on me and says, what do you think you're doing? I tell her I'm trying to get this entitled woman to leave. The nurse looks like she's about to say something, but that's when the Vietnam veteran cuts in and says, this woman's trying to get him to leave me alone so he can go do God knows what for her. And she told me she doesn't care if I live or die. The nurse then turns to Karen and says, Ma'am, is this true? I'm gonna need you to get back to the front desk and wait for a nurse to help you. The woman screams and says, We've been here for 10 minutes with no help. I'm not waiting any longer. You need to help me right now. I demand to know where my family member is right this second. Now, as soon as the nurse hears that name, her face immediately goes cold and she says, Ma'am, that person died 8 months ago and was cremated soon after because her family wouldn't return our calls. You can check the morgue for the ashes, but I doubt they've saved them for this long. The woman looks shocked at this news, and honestly, I think she realized what a horrible family member she was at this point, and I think she may have possibly started to cry, I'm not sure, but she definitely went quiet and walked back to her family. I don't know what happened to them after that, and honestly, I didn't care enough to try to find out, I just couldn't believe that person's actions. Now I do feel a little sorry for the family, since I don't know the reasons why there was such a long time span between visits, No matter what the reason, it doesn't excuse walking into a dying man's room and causing a scene making him yell at you. Seriously, who does that? Guys, I can't help but to feel bad for that woman, even though she was acting like a jerk. But like OP said, that's no excuse to act like a jerk. And guys, I've been there. I've known people who've lived out their last days in places like that. And it's just so sad going there to visit and having nurses tell me that a lot of the people that are in there never get visitors. Like, their kids just send them there and just forget about them. It's just so sad. So from 2010 to 2014, I worked in a walk-in style salon in the largest shopping center of an extremely small town. The salon was located two doors down from a dollar store. We also shared a parking lot with a Walmart on one end and four fast food restaurants on the other end. One cannot comprehend the amount of time I spent wandering the shopping center, mostly at the behest of others and getting paid for it. Being undiagnosed ADHD at the time, I completed my haircuts with speed and accuracy all the while chatting up the clients, doing chores, and making store runs for the other girls. Even medicated now, I'm not very good at sitting still. I would volunteer for most side jobs and anything that gets me out of the store. So anytime you wear an apron to a store with an apron in the uniform, you'll most likely get mistaken for an employee. It's happened a lot to the other girls and myself, but this might have been due to the size of town and familiar faces. It doesn't seem to matter that the store's aprons are bright green and Mine's glitter black vinyl or zebra stripe. On one such day, I was standing in the back of the line at the checkout. My arms are filled with candy, and I'm using my incredibly vivid apron as a sling to carry a verified crap ton of super cheap junk food. And that's when I heard someone snickering. I found the lovely elderly lady in front of me just chuckling to herself. A moment later, she turns, met my eyes, and said, I just did a cartoon-like triple take when I saw you behind me. The woman continues giggling and says, I saw the apron when I turned around hearing a crying baby. I started to turn back around to ask you something and then realized your apron wasn't a uniform. But then I had to really look at the apron. I think my daughter-in-law would absolutely love that apron. I thanked the woman for her compliments and wrote the name of the website I got the apron down for her. The woman chuckles again about almost mistaking me for an employee. And I told her, hey, it happens every other time I come here, but most people are pretty nice when I tell them I don't work here. But I'm here often enough that I could probably find it anyway. The woman tells me that's very sweet, and then her eyes dart towards my shoulder. I realize that someone's been clearing her throat behind me for some time. I thought it was the next customer until she tapped my shoulder. And that's when I turn around with my arms filled with a diabetic coma. The woman instantly steps back, turning red, realizing her mistake, and she starts apologizing. The woman in front of me laughs so hard that she has to lean on the counter for support. I try to explain to the Karen what we'd just been talking about as she looks mortified. I then explain that the woman's laughing at the irony, not her mistake. 
I politely ask her what she's looking for in the first place, and then sent her in that direction. She again apologizes and thanks me profusely, backing away. The lady and I start giggling to ourselves for both of our transactions. She then came back to the salon with me and she left a $20 tip for my style, good attitude, and how I handled myself. She was one of my regulars until I left some years later. Now that's an I don't work here lady story that I enjoy. And honestly, it's probably what 99% of I don't work here situations are like. Just humans mistaking others and then moving on with their lives. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. And if you missed yesterday's episode, it's an R slash pro revenge, where OP's ex cheats on her, and just to add insult to injury, he empties out her life savings. And she absolutely destroys him. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.